It's story time. Chapter 1. The Messenger Working on this show has not only introduced me to new, fascinating, and insightful people, but it's also, in a way, reintroduced me to those I've already known. My family. My mom is an avid listener of the show. I'm pretty sure I inherited my love of supernatural stories from her. And she always shares my episodes with our relatives. And one of my titas had listened. We'll call her Reina. And she called me up to tell me about all the unexplainable things that have happened to her. In this first story, I was actually there. So back when I was maybe nine or ten, I was at the birthday party of one of my older cousins. We were taking turns at the piñata, and it was my oldest cousin's turn to go. We'll call her Stella. No one had so much as made a dent in the piñata, so everyone was eagerly waiting to see if she would be the first to break it. She put on the blindfold, readied the metal bat in her hands, and we all took a step back as she swung. She made contact. She swung again. This time, we heard it crack, and our mouths began to salivate at the thought of all the candy we were about to come into. She swung again. Then, a loud thud, followed by that satisfying sound of treats trickling onto the ground. She lifted her arms again, completely unaware that my other cousin, we'll call him Gil, had run towards the candy. There was a collective gasp among all the adults. They all began screaming for Stella to stop, but she must have confused them for cheers of encouragement, and she swung that bat hard. And as the bat came hurling towards Gil's head, he bent down to grab a handful of sweets, and it went right over him. Stella brought the bat around again, but this time, it stopped, just before hitting Gil. I remember we were all staring in horror, shocked at how close Gil had come to having his young skull beaten in. I remember thinking, wow, Gil was really lucky that day. And now, a few decades later, my tita told me the events that led up to that incredibly lucky moment. My tita Reina worked in the natal intensive care unit at the time. There was only one other coworker with her in the room. As tita Reina was washing her hands, she heard her coworker call out to her. But they didn't call her by name. They called her Bebot, Bebot. which was a family nickname that only the ones closest to her used. This caught Tita Reina by surprise. Why did you just call me that? Tita Reina asked. Her co-worker looked at her in confusion. Call you what? They replied. Didn't you just call me? I didn't say anything. They reassured her. Tita Reina figured she must have been imagining it. But then she kept hearing someone calling her by nickname. Bebot. I don't want to be called Bebot at work. Tita Reina lashed out at her co-worker, who still insisted that they didn't say anything. When Tita Reina got home that night, she felt the sensation of walking into cobwebs in her garage. She swatted at her face, but ultimately, nothing was there. Her husband was already in bed, and so she went to sleep. The next morning, while they were getting ready to head to the birthday party, Tita Reina kept feeling someone tap her shoulder, She turned to her husband to ask him what he wanted, but every time, it wasn't him. She figured she was just exhausted, and so they left for the party. When Gil ran out towards the candy, she screamed the loudest. Gil is her son. And I didn't know this at the time, but after the bat stopped right before hitting his head, my dad had turned to my tita and said, Wow. It looked like someone stopped the bat. At the time, Tita Reina was just grateful that Gil was unharmed. Then later that day, when they returned home, she had that same sensation of walking through cobwebs in her garage. 
and then her sister called. She asked if she was okay, and my tita asked why. And that's when she told her that their brother had passed the night before. This was my tita's second to oldest brother. She had many siblings, but they were extremely close. He had always been proud of her for becoming a nurse and loved her very much. Tita Reina asked when he died, and she realized it was around the same time she heard someone calling her name at the hospital. Bebot was what her brother called her. Then she thought about the party and how Gil narrowly escaped the bat. She believes that her brother was there with her that day. My tita is a nurse, so she spends most of her time around people who need help. And throughout her career, her intuition has saved countless lives. One time, she had a patient who was about 60 to 70 years old. All of his vitals were fine, but she felt that something was wrong. She told the doctor, but she couldn't exactly articulate what she thought was wrong, just that something was. The doctor called her stupid and reprimanded her for wasting their time when the patient was fine. So she called the cardiologist, and they told her to give the patient Tylenol and he'd be fine. She kept on insisting that they needed to do some tests. Eventually, they called the ultrasound tech and found something wrong. When they transferred the patient to the OR, he coded. If it wasn't for my tita's insistence, the patient may not have made it. Tita Reina has had many instances where what her intuition was telling her differed from what the doctors were saying. And every time she's had that feeling, she's been right and saved somebody's life. Like this one 40-year-old patient in the ICU. She had overdosed and was pronounced brain dead. The hospital was planning to harvest her organs. But when my tita saw the patient's nine-year-old daughter, she wanted to try something. The other doctors and nurses said it was pointless since they had tried everything but had gotten no response. But my tita didn't care and sat next to the patient and spoke to her. You're going to leave her? She said, gesturing toward the young girl. I don't think you want to leave her yet. She took out her pen and tapped the patient on the foot. It twitched ever so slightly. She hadn't done that before. Tita Reina then held her hand and said, If you can hear me, squeeze my hand. The patient gave a soft squeeze and opened her eyes. This woman was admitted at 7 p.m., and by 7 a.m. the next morning, she was sitting upright in a chair, completely back to normal and ready to go home. Tita Reina not only spared lives from crossing over too soon, but has helped those who need to move on. There was a nurse couple that she was friends with. We'll call them Isla and Dan. Isla had passed away from breast cancer. Two years after she passed, Tita Reina had a vivid dream. She saw Isla smiling and happy and surrounded by pink and white roses. Then Isla asked, Reina, I need a favor from you. Will you please tell my husband to go on with his life? I love him, but it's time he moved on. When Tita Reina woke up, she told her husband about it, but didn't feel comfortable delivering that message to Dan. It might have just been a random dream, and Dan might feel offended by it. Not long after she had that dream, Tita Reina and her husband attended the birthday party of the son of Isla's friend, Marisol. They were catching up with Marisol, and she was telling them about Isla's funeral. Out of curiosity, Tita Reina asked what kind of flowers they had. She said there were pink and white roses everywhere, her favorite. My Tita's husband nudged her and said she should tell her about the dream. She asked Marisol how Dan was doing, and she said that Dan had a new girlfriend, but was very clearly still in love with his wife. At that point, the coincidences were too much for her to write her dream off as entirely meaningless. 
but she still didn't feel comfortable sharing this information with Dan just yet. Then, a few months had passed, and Tita Reina attended a funeral, and Dan was there. She decided to talk with him. This might seem strange, she said, but I had a dream about your wife. She told me to tell you that it's time to move on. Dan stared at her for a few moments, letting the words sink in. Thank you, he said. I was feeling guilty about my new girlfriend. She wants to get married, and I know I'm keeping her at a distance. You know I still visit Isla's grave every single day. I'm really glad you told me that. It's not strange at all. Thank you. My tita says that she never wanted to be a nurse. Her mother had forced her to become one, but she never felt the calling. She's always scared that she'll make a mistake. But after hearing her remarkable stories, it's hard to imagine that she was meant to be anywhere else. Thank you for all the good you do and have done, Tita. And thank you to all the healthcare workers out on the front lines during this pandemic. 